Hey everyone, so in this video, we're going to show you how to use MATLAB to solve some discrete equations. In particular, we'll be covering using MATLAB to solve the logistic equation, our old friend. So as we walk through this video, I'm gonna kind of explain a little bit about the ins and outs of how to use MATLAB for these types of problems. If you're interested in some of these um, other kind of programming constructs, for loops, while loops, things like that, please consult some of the other supplemental videos. So let's get started. When you open up MATLAB, you should see a window something along this, where you have basically your command window, it's called. You have this current folder on the left, and your workspace on the right that I've kind of hidden off my screen. Now I want you to notice one thing is that currently I am in the Nick Batista um, user directory. I'm in my desktop and then I'm in this folder that I created called MathBio. And the reason I'm showing you this is because in MATLAB we need to be inside of the folder that we're going to try to run our codes from. So a code in the math bio folder is the only type of code I'm allowed to run from this screen. All right, so you can go up to this, uh, uh, this box that says new script. If we click that, it'll bring up a blank script for us. All right, and this is where we're going to run or write our MATLAB script to actually solve this logistic equation. So let's begin. The first thing we need to do is just give this a name. I call this a function so I can call it from that command window and it will do something for me. So let's just make this call, let's just call this logistic model, open close parentheses. Inside these parentheses, if we wanted any inputs into our model, we could put those there for now. Let's just assume that this function takes no inputs. And then we can go up and save this. And I'm just gonna make sure again, I'm saving this in that math bio folder because that's the folder I wanna run it from in our command window. And I'm just gonna call this logistic model. Now that that's saved, let's actually start writing this script. So, there's a bunch of different ways in which we could write this. I'm gonna set up some benchmarks for us that I think are just proper um, or good practice, let's just say, for solving these types of discrete equations. And the first is I wanna define my parameters in the model. So in this model up above, you can see we have a couple parameters. We have K and we have C. So I just wanna make sure that we're defining K and C somewhere in this script. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll just say for, for this example, let's just let k equal something like 0 0.5 and let's c equal say 250. I'm going to put a semicolon at the end of these lines so that when I run this code it doesn't dump those values to that command window as well. And one thing that I'm big on encoding is I want to make sure that if I come back to this in a week, a year, I know what exactly what everything is doing in this code. So I want to basically just comment all over the place. And the way we can comment in MATLAB is using the percentage sign. So if we just do a percentage sign, anything after that percentage sign we write, the, when we run the code, it's just going to ignore that line. Comments, the code doesn't care about. They're really just for the user to help us out. And I'm actually just gonna give this, um, tell us what these are. These are our growth rate, and these were our carrying capacity. And anyone that's had me before for a computational class knows that I'm big in sort of writing as many comments as possible, as well as just kind of dividing up the code using these comments. So this is just the way that I write things because it helps me sort of do things in a very module fashion or modular fashion. So I'll just copy that so I can use that as I go ahead and co uh, comment throughout the code. So we have our parameters defined. The next thing we'd like to do is, well, we need to use our initial condition. Or initial value as it were. 
So we start to make sure that that is defined somewhere. Remember our initial value in this case was that x0 equals, I guess I gave you 10. So make my lovely comment and I'll just say x0 equals 10. And the reason I'm separating the parameters and initial values are, these are gonna be kind of the knobs that we're allowed to turn as we wanna keep rerunning the code for different uh, parameters, different initial values. The next thing we can define, oop, got a little ahead of myself, let's just say x0 equals 10, is our time information. Now, for these discrete equations, we don't have too much time information really to divulge because we know that time steps forward from one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. We really just need to tell it what is the last iteration number we want. So I'll just say something like n underscore, let's say, um, n. And I'll just say, let's set this to 100. So that'll be the number of iterations we perform. And again, all these values that we're hard coding in right now, we can go ahead and change when we rerun the model for different scenarios. So we're almost at the point where we've done all the back work. We've already set up the parameters, the initial value time information. We're getting really close to where we actually get to go ahead and iterate for our solutions. So the way in which we're going to do this is we wanna store our solutions in a vector. or store iteration values in a vector. And the reason I bring this up is because this is going to be immensely important for us as we go about counting. Let me just drag this over to the other side of the screen to give us a little more writing room. So if we have our vector of solution values, we want the first value in that vector to be our initial value. So I'll just make that clear. First entry is initial value. Okay, maybe that makes sense, but it's good for explicitly saying this. The other thing to notice is MATLAB starts indexing at one. So what this means is we can't have a zeroth entry of a vector. We can only start at any, or at the first value in the vector starting at the index of one. So we're gonna be a little bit off in the way in which we're thinking of our initial value, which we usually think of as n equals zero. But for our vector, that has to be in the first entry that's given by a one index. So let me just write that out. So our solution vector, let's just call x. And we'll say that the first entry is equal to our initial value. And again, this is because MATLAB starts indexing at one. So I'll just write another comment. So that's why we don't have X parentheses zero because MATLAB doesn't know what parentheses zero means. All right. So next, we are all ready to start iterating.
And the way in which we can iterate is using one of our favorite programming tools, a for loop. Let me just clear some, clear some space in the screen for us. And the reason why we want a for loop is a for loop's really good for doing a specific number of tasks. So if we want to go from n equals one, two, three, four, five, all the way to our last value that we called n end here, we can just tell MATLAB to do that using a for loop. So we can say for, say little n is equal to one. We can do a colon, say another one that says, hey, we're starting at one, the first value here. We're iterating in steps of one, and we want to go all the way to our last value. Okay. And once we open a for loop, it's always good practice just to hit enter a few times and then finish it or close it by writing end. So now we can solve for our solution value inside of that for loop. That little index n will be counting for us every time we go through that loop. So when n equals one, when n equals two, when n equals three, and so on. So let's go ahead and update. Now just write, use a for loop. And again, for loops are really good for doing a specific number of tasks, which is exactly what we wanna do here. Now we can start actually writing in our iteration. And for that, we get to go and consult our actual equation we care about back up here. So if we have the next value, we want x of n plus one, the solution at the n plus first time point. Remember, we're iterating with respect to n is equal to the previous solution value which was just our index n, plus how that solution changes. We have our parameter k times xn times open and close parentheses, one minus x of n all over c. And again, we can write that sem put that semicolon there so it doesn't dump a lot of values to screen. And that's basically it for finding our solutions. Every single time we go through that for loop, we're just gonna add a brand new solution. So when n equals one, we're actually getting the solution x of two. When n is three, we're getting the solution x of four, and so on. And the last thing to do, let's go ahead and try to plot this, just to see what our solution looks like. I'll hit enter a few times, give us a little more space here. Remember our solution is stored in that variable x. Let's make a note of this. So what we actually want to do is plot this against the time n. So we don't actually have a vector of n values, since up here we just arbitrarily said, hey, go from one to the largest number of n that we care about. So let's make a vector of n values to actually plot our solution x against. So I'll just say lowercase n vec equals one, in steps of, for starting at one, in steps of one, going all the way to the last n value we care about. So that's just a vector of n values now. So the idea is we have this vector of n values. We have this vector now of solution values. Let's just plot them against each other. And to do that, we can use MATLAB's function. That's just plot, open, close parentheses. In the first entry, we can put the independent variable, which in this case here would be nvec, 
the iteration counter for us that we just defined. And in the dependent variable, we can write our solution x. And at the end, we can hit semicolon, and then this hold on. The hold on is good if we want to continue adding other solutions to this same plot. So for example, if this was a coupled system where we had x, y, and maybe z, we could just keep adding these hold on so the solution for x will be plotted on the same plot as the solution for y, as the solution for z, and so on. All right, that pretty much does it, I think. Let's go ahead and try to run this. So in the command window, we should see our code that we just wrote, or the script, called logistic model. So we can just call that right from the command window, hit enter, and hopefully we see a solution. Oh no, it looks like that there's some error. And what's really nice about MATLAB is it pretty much tells you what the error is. So it says there's an error using plot. We're told the vectors must be the same length. And it tells us what line the error occurred on. In this case, line 36. So let's just click that. It should bring us to our code. Lo and behold, that is the plot line. So what could be going wrong here? Well, if you remember from the error, it said the vectors must be the same length. So what that suggests is our index counting vector, nvec, is not the same size as our solution vector. So to just test that, we can use a nice MATLAB function that's just called length that tells us the length or the amount of entries in a vector. So we can type length for nvec, length of x. That'll just give us a little more space to work with. And notice I didn't put the semicolons here. I'm just gonna to try to rerun the code. We're gonna see the error pop up again because we didn't try to change anything. Right now, by doing this length stuff, I'm really just trying to debug the code or see what the issue is. So rerunning it, there's our error. But we also see that, hey, these two other numbers spit to screen because we didn't suppress with the semicolon. One of those lengths is 100, the other length is 101. The length of the nvec was 100. That's exactly the way we defined it up here, but the length of x was actually 101. So the vectors aren't the same size, so that's why that error is getting thrown. So let's go back and see what's happening. Well, we're iterating, to find our solutions from n equals one in steps of one all the way to n end. And the issue that's coming up is, we could stare at this for a few moments, is when n equals n end, we're actually finding the end end plus first value. So we're actually finding 101 solutions or 101 iterations rather than the first 100 iterations. So the way we can do this is, if we just go from for the for loop, we start at n equals one, which is fine. We want to do steps of one as well, but instead of going to n end, we can go to n end minus one. That way, the last entry will be n end minus one plus one will be n end. So let's go ahead and try to rerun this. We have two of the same vector lengths. And lo and behold, there is our plot. And MATLAB's nice because you can use this arrow key. Oops, it's freaking out a bit. But you can resize this plot and everything using this arrow key. And you see if you hover over kind of the right side of the screen, You'll see these other options for like pan, zoom in, other things. So if we just grab this, we can shift around the solution just by grabbing it. And this looks like a typical logistic model. The solution increases and then basically steadily becomes flat at the carrying capacity. Hope this video was useful. Please check out the next video on how to make this a little more aesthetically pleasing of a plot.